kind of a morning routine that I go through. You know, get up early. Green Bay is, you know, a, a metropolis here, so we have three Starbucks in town. And, uh, you know, it opens at 5.30. And I get the Vente Skinny Vanilla Latte No Foam. Because when you pay over four bucks for a cup of coffee and they fill up with half foam, I, I, have, I struggle with that a little bit. I just go through the things I have in front of me and, you know, spend 10 to 15 minutes drinking a cup of coffee and just get myself ready for the day. Mike McCarthy is head coach of the world champion Green Bay Packers. Sometimes, as the sun creeps up over Lambeau Field, he thinks about his first job. Back then, young Michael was one of five McCarthy kids who grew up in the Pittsburgh suburb of Greenfield. He worked at his dad's bar and had to clean the bathroom. A few guys didn't always hit their target, so it was uh, something I didn't look forward to do uh, after church on, on Sunday morning, so that was, that was my first job. Later, as an unpaid assistant at the University of Pittsburgh, he made ends meet as a turnpike toll collector on the graveyard shift. In 1999, McCarthy turned in his playbook and got the pink slip from these same Packers when Ray Rhodes and his entire staff were sent packing. Oh yeah, I was very disappointed. I don't think, yeah, I mean, anytime time you're, you're fired as a coaching staff, you're, you're very disappointed that you didn't do a good enough job. And when I left after that season, I thought the only time I'll ever see this place again was probably as a visiting coach. In 2005, McCarthy became offensive coordinator of the 49ers. In the upcoming draft, San Francisco had the first pick and wanted a quarterback. One of the candidates McCarthy interviewed was a 49er fan who grew up down the road in Chico, California. I dreamt about being the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. I used to draw little plays on, on note cards and, uh, and dream I was Joe Montana throwing passes in the backyard with Dad. Aaron Rodgers didn't get a single Division I scholarship offer. You know, I got recruited by big schools like Lewis and Clark and Claremont McKenna and Occidental and places you probably never heard of before. Lesser known still was Rodgers' local school. Tiny Butte Community College. And I said, there's no way I'm ever going to Butte College. Uh, that was just, I felt like I was ready to play it at a um, Division I program. Butte it was. But after just one season, Rogers transferred to Cal. There, his talents were showcased for all to see, especially the nearby 49ers. I met with Mike McCarthy and he said, I think we're going to pick you. I mean, this is a no-brainer. Like, I'm from Chico, three hours away, went to Berkeley, best quarterback in the draft. I mean, let's make it happen. While Rodgers did things the hard way, Charles Woodson did things his way. Born with severely clubbed feet, he pushed himself until he could outrun everyone. He was named Ohio's Mr. Football, but he bolted to Michigan. Despite playing mostly defense, he won the Heisman Trophy anyway. Woodson was cocky and defiant. A perfect fit, it seemed, for the Raiders. I'm going in the bad bedroom for a lot of slippers, D. <laughs> in Oakland, Woodson lost games and he lost his fire. In the 2001 playoffs, his apparent game-winning sack and forced fumble of Tom Brady was overturned in a bitter defeat. In the Super Bowl a year later, he struggled on a still healing broken leg and the Raiders were beaten badly. After eight seasons, Oakland released Woodson. He was an unwanted free agent. I thought I was done. They thought I couldn't play the game anymore. He's lost a step, can't coach him, sleeping in meetings, 
bad locker room guy. Could I still play football? No question about it. In time, a written off cast off, an underestimated quarterback, and a coach once let go by the Packers would all end up in Green Bay. Draft day, 2005. It was going to be a perfect fit. Me and San Francisco, my childhood team, and I was going to be wearing the red and gold. You kind of joke with the guys in the green room on the bus over, like, hey, who's going to be the last one in there? You know, we all thought we are going top ten. Well, it's not that funny when it's you. With the uh, first selection in the 2005 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith, quarterback, Utah. It was a whirlwind. Second. Ronnie Brown. Third. Braylon Edwards. Fourth. Cedric Benson. Carnell Williams. Adam Jones. Troy Williamson. You know, maybe Arizona at eight. Antrell Roll. Just kind of sat there and, and um, faced the reality of, of dropping in the draft. On the inside, there was a lot of disappointment. David Pollock. Embarrassment. Rasmus James. Just thinking about how hard you work. Alex Barron. Was it even worth it? Matt Jones. Um, very humbling. With the 24th selection in the 2005 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Aaron Rodgers, quarterback, California. Man. 24? But it was honestly the best thing to happen to me. I was 21 years old. I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread, and I needed a little bit of humble pie. The quarterback position in Green Bay wasn't a bicycle built for two. One man led the Packers. Three-time MVP, Brett Favre. Drafting a quarterback in the first round is, is a statement. We all know that. And I think he was um, offended by it and, and wanted to prove that he was still the best quarterback uh, on the team, in the league, and, and that I was going to be on the bench for a while. In 2006, Mike McCarthy was rehired by the Packers as head coach. Good, hustle off, hustle off. Give me that second group! Stuck between his miffed starter and impatient backup, McCarthy had another problem. Charles Woodson did not want to be there, but he had no other offers. He arrived itching for a fight. Charles and the, and the coach, there was a confrontation. It blew up from there. I asked him to leave, leave the field. Me and him are going at it back and forth. There's an opportunity to kind of clear the air and things kind of picked up after that. From that moment on, we knew what to expect from each other and it, it's, been a, it's been a good relationship ever since. After a rocky start, the heir apparent and the future Hall of Famer found a way to get along too. I told you. I know. We were talking about that. And years two and three were great. Put her in the old vice. We had a lot of fun together. Won a lot of games and, um, you know, had some, had some good times. After just two seasons, McCarthy's Packers hosted the NFC Championship game. Woodson and the defense took a pounding from the Giants. But in overtime, Favre had the ball and a shot at his third Super Bowl. Favre's interception was his last pass as a Packer. After 16 seasons, the legend was out and A-Rod was in. For Rodgers, life with Favre was difficult. Without him, it was horrible. A couple people challenged to, to fight me. Threats on, on my life. People talking about I'm gonna break his arm, I'm gonna break his legs. I just don't understand that when it was, uh, how am I the bad guy when all I've been doing is preparing to be a starter and the guy retires and I'm annoyed at the starter and, and I'm just trying to be the starter. Let's have some fun tonight, right? Let's make some plays, do a little dance, score a lot of points. Let's go score on three, one, two, three, score! In 2008, Rodgers threw for over 4,000 yards and won over everyone. 
This caps a tumultuous offseason and training camp for Aaron wow. Rodgers. The kid played well. In 2009, he threw for 4,000 yards again and made it look easy. Still a candy from a baby right there, baby. Charles Woodson dedicated himself and became the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah! Go on! Go on! Go on! They were playoff bound. In a wild, wild card game, the Cardinals and Packers ran up 96 points. The game went into overtime. I saw the ball in the air. I felt like someone shot me, shot me in the back. And the game is over. Ball triggered loose. What a way for it to end. And uh, I am such a anti-dramatic person. For me to fall on my knees, I think I got up so damn fast because I was, I was embarrassed that I did something like that. After another playoff loss, McCarthy did do something dramatic. Six months before the 2010 season would start, he made a change to the Packers' hallowed champions meeting room. You had all the pictures on this right side, all on this left side, and they all led up to one space in the corner. Mike put a blank picture up there. There's no faces. There's nothing on it. And said, this is where our picture would be. We can have our picture up on this board, immortalized, for every team to ever follow after you that lives on. You just knew that, you know what? That's what we're playing for. That's our ultimate goal. Stay focused. I think at that moment, we all just got a little, you know, some goosebumps and said, man, let, let's make it happen. Super Bowl 45 would be in North Texas. Preparations were already underway in Green Bay at the preseason kickoff luncheon. We wanted to do something special this year and get a lot of guys involved. So I knew in order to make this happen, I needed to go out and buy cowboy hats. So sure enough, I went out and bought about 10 or 12 cowboy hats, a couple nice Stetsons. We were the classy cowboys with the cowboy hats and the bolos. The bolo, or string tie, with the little emblem at the top, really brought the outfit together. It was kind of like uh, the rug in the movie The Big Lebowski that brought the room together. The bolo kind of brought the whole outfit together. Howdy. I don't know if you notice this, but we got a number of players who are already dressed for Dallas, Texas, so we're ready to go. In an opening day win in Philadelphia, Clay Matthews was a Texas tornado with three sacks. Vick is hit by Matthews and sacked! Five sacks now by the Packer defense. Champ to Rodgers. Looking around, rainbows left side, got Jennings, touchdown! First time Packers won here since 1962. That's a nice thing. More importantly, okay, we talked about last night. We came here for a win, and we came here to grow. Okay, we got a lot to grow from. Matthew's blonde growth made him the center of attention, but his antics didn't grow on everyone. I don't like to watch him in pregame because I think it's absolutely uh, ridiculous. Of course, that bottle and swings it back. I don't know. I think it's his. Uh, his Fabio moment, I think, maybe. <laughs> Teenage Wasteland! He loves to play to the camera. To be a singer. Probably got the best voice on this team. He wants to say as much, you know, bizarre, crazy stuff as he can. <laughs> oh, must be not Santa. I like to tease him about being Hollywood. He tries to do the same thing to me. So, Hollywood bro coming out in the fourth quarter. The difference between him and I is that I'm from Northern California and I act like it. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And he's from Southern California and he acts like it. And I think if, it, you know, if he wasn't any good, he'd take a lot of heat for it. But he's a heck of a player, so nobody gives him anything about it. Matthews notched three more sacks in week two against Buffalo. Clay Matthews relentless up the middle. Rodgers threw two touchdown passes and ran for a third. At 2-0, he busted out an early championship belt. It's something that just started in practice. 
Uh, it's definitely something that the fans really enjoy and my teammates do as well. And the first time I saw it, I thought it had a you know sexual connotation to it. I was a little concerned. But then I, when I was told exactly what it was, I think it's kind of neat. I've always felt slightly slighted by the fact that people don't think I'm very athletic. So the belt is primarily reserved for home runs and charity softball games and uh, big runs. Anytime anybody does it, it's, oh, they just did the Aaron Rodgers belt. It's taken off into a stratosphere of its own. The Packers' early season fortunes, however, plummeted. They lost three of their next four games, two of them in overtime. Kick and overhand to the upright, and it is gone. Anyway, for the second week in a row, the Packers lose in overtime on a field goal. The NFL's second youngest team was losing players, too, 15 in all to injured reserve, by far the most in the league. Derek Martin had a knee sprain, did not return. Ryan Pickett had an ankle injury, did not return. Donald Lee had a shoulder injury, did not return. Clay Matthews had a hamstring strain, and Aaron Rodgers had a concussion there at the end of the game. Injuries kept coming. It was like, man, you know, is our season doomed already? We didn't understand what was going on under, or understand how we were going to get out of it. So I think at that time, mentally, we were just scrambling about how this season was going to play out. Well, it's the figure eight and just a ball handling drill. You do it by timing, and it's something I've kept score through San Francisco, New Orleans, Kansas City, all the old scores, and, and uh, Aaron, Aaron has broken all the records. I've watched that for 15 years, 13. He don't know how good that is. And I will be a little cocky here. There's really nobody that they brought in. They brought a number of quarterbacks. There's nobody they brought in who can compete with me in those figure eight drills. There was one man Rodgers had never beaten. In 2009, he had lost twice to Brett Favre and the Vikings. The two faced off again in week seven. It was personal. You know, it was personal not only for us as players, but it was personal for that state of Wisconsin. We have to beat Brett Favre. He's the guy who led us for 16 years, and now he's playing for the purple team over there. We got to beat them. Hey, the 200, 200, 200. The two linebackers, they back out of there. Stamp to Rogers, four man rush over the middle. Inside. Rogers won the duel, and the Packers won the game. The victory over Favre ignited a four-game winning streak. Here's the snap to Kidnick, quick throw, and it's intercepted! In the rematch against Favre in Minnesota, Rodgers threw four touchdown passes, while old number four was battered and beaten. Those are two big games for us from a momentum standpoint. I think important from a, you know, from a psyche as well, just to know that we, uh, we were able to win those games against um, a guy who really wanted to beat the Packers bad. We got our foot on the gas, hands on the wheel, we're looking straight ahead. I think we had our, our foot on the gas and our hands out the window, but the keys were never in the ignition. That was because of the flat tire they got in Atlanta. 
Despite a comeback capped by a late Rodgers touchdown pass, the Packers lost in the final seconds. The kick to the uprights, and it is gone right down the boulevard. They made one more play, and we did. The one thing that did come out of that game, our guys, our guys had a lot of confidence that if we played that team again, uh, that we'd be ready for them. They were seven and four. December would decide if they'd achieve the goal they set back in March. Mike McCarthy is superstitious. He uses a red Sharpie in the first half and a black or blue one in the second. In case I lose a Sharpie, I have backup Sharpies in my pocket. Well, that's my red pen. You have mine. You have mine right I think when I reached back, I, I, I missed. It wasn't there. I had it right in my hand. I mean, it was a good minute later. I figured I was in my hat. Hey, to the back of my hat. How about that? I mean, I ain't focused. Against San Francisco, Donald Driver turned in a play that no one could ever have written up. gets close to him, he slaps him in the back, slaps him by him, he keeps running. Somebody jumps on his back, throws that guy <laughs> by him, and just one of the most incredible plays that, that you'd ever see, you know, in your lifetime. The following week, in a loss to the Lions, there was a memorable play of a much different kind. Steps to the pocket under pressure, steps up. Rodgers takes it himself, scrambles 30, 35, straight ahead, 40. And he's knocked down across the 40-yard line. And Rodgers slow to get up. My teammates were telling me to stay down. I was saying, get me up. Not in those words. My chin strap was just below my nose. I was out of it. Rodgers shaking up on that play. He took a heck of a shot and drilled him good. I think at some point, after having one concussion already that season, you start to really think about, um, you know, your your health. And after football, and what am I doing out here? And I just had to had to tell the docs, you know what? I don't remember what happened. And you don't say it at the time, but you're a little bit scared. <laughs> Devastated. You're concerned about your friend. That was a tough loss for us because we not only lost that game, but we lost one of the best players on our team. Rodgers sat out the next week in New England. The Packers lost by four. They were eight and six. Two games remained. If the Packers didn't win them both, they'd be out of the playoffs. It's do or die. Kick that ass the whole day! They get nothing! Drive the ball down the throws down eight on three. One, two, three. Oh, man, let's go, After the week off, Rodgers played his finest game of the season. Against the Giants, he threw for over 400 yards. The Packers stayed alive. In the season finale, the stakes were clear. Win, and they're in. We definitely don't want these bombs in the playoffs. You gotta go ahead and punch our ticket in to get in this dance. The Packers beat the Bears, just barely, 10 to 3. They were in the playoffs, the sixth and final seed. Yeah! Congratulations, we're one of six. One of six. Our path has been set. You mean anything can happen? <laughs> and I mean anything. To be a champion, the Packers would have to win four straight games away from Lambeau Field. They had to take it one step at a time. 16 quarters. We got 16 quarters left. 16 quarters. In Philadelphia, stopping Michael Vick was job one. He was sacked on the game's first play and pressured throughout. Ah! 
After caging Philadelphia's prime weapon, Green Bay unleashed a previously unknown weapon of its own, a rookie runner who was injured most of the year. James Starks ran for 123 yards. Aaron Rodgers threw for three scores. The Packers led by five in the final minutes. Hey, all we need is one play. One play. Clock continues to move down to 45 seconds remaining. Steps, pump fakes, now airs it out. Left side into the end zone. Intercepted. Tremont Williams. And there is your wild card dagger. 12 quarters. 12 to go. It's the young I hope, but they let the wrong dogs in this house. Right tonight. Stick together. This is our moment. Back on three. Watch our meeting. In the rematch in Atlanta, the Packers erupted for 35 straight points. Intercepted. Down the sideline. Come on, Williams. Into the clear. To the 40. To the 30. All the way up. To the touchdown. B.J. Raji in a fullback. The world's largest lead blocker since William the Refrigerator period. <laughs> Here's the handoff on the right side. Come on, Spins. Go on. Touchdown. I think they ought to give it to B.J. one of these times. Uh, the natural back, though. I'm the freezer, baby. Call me the freezer, I'm the freezer. <laughs> Desperate to turn the tide, the Falcons' John Abraham taunted Rodgers by stealing his belt. I think any good celebration is made better when it's copied and mocked. Uh, in the John Abraham case, I was able to get the last laugh. Rodgers was 31 of 36 with four touchdowns one of the greatest performances in NFL playoff history. I don't know what it was, but I felt like that they were not gonna be able to take me down. Got out of two or three sacks, it should have been sacks, and was able to make some plays outside the pocket that even surprised myself. Houdini! 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 You know what, if I wanted to put the ball on a certain number, I was going to every single time. If I was rolling to my right and had to throw across my body to Donald Driver as one in the in route, I could put the ball around the money. That boy A-Rod's a monster, man. He's a beast, bro. It was one of those nights where I felt in, in complete control. Not since Sherman came through this town in the Civil War has Atlanta been beaten as thoroughly as they have here tonight by Green Bay. Well, that was uh, one of my favorite belts that I put on kind of remind Mr. Abraham and, uh, and the fans that I still had the belt on. It was, uh, that was a pretty special one. Now it's outside to play some real football the way it's supposed to be played. That's either the Windy City or the Pacific Northwest, but it don't matter. Here come the pack. Eight quarters. Eight quarters. Eight quarters to go. So it is the Packers and Bears, and it's never meant more than this. The NFC Championship, the 182nd meeting. It truly is NFL history in the making. This is the way it should be. We came there for one reason, and that was to beat the Bears. And nobody could stop us now. Come on now, we got to take this down and score. Come on. He takes it into the end zone and self-diving for the pylon. Packers knocked quarterback Jay Cutler out of the game. But the biggest tackle of all was delivered by Green Bay's quarterback. Snap to Rodgers. Looks. Now steps up in a tight pocket. Throws the ball. Intercepted by Brian Urlacher. So I just said, I'm going to run as fast as I can. And I think I'm as fast as him. Maybe not faster, but I think I'm as fast. And I'm mad as hell. Got just enough of him around the thigh or whatever to trip him up. No question. I mean, a huge job by Aaron Rodgers getting him to the ground. I'm sure he's disappointed he got tripped up. and I'm disappointed that's my best play of the game. Rodgers' unlikely tackle saved the day, and an unlikely lineman scored the game-winning touchdown. Haney throws it over the middle. Intercepted! Intercepted! 
He's a big, uh, he's a big fan of the belt. B.J. Raji puts on a little bit bigger belt yeah, than that's Aaron Rodgers typically that's puts a, on. That's a big boy belt. I let him use it whenever he wants when he can make plays like that. B.J., give me one back! Boom! Oh! oh. You're going to the ball, man! Come on, man! The president planned on going to the Super Bowl, too. But since the Packers had beaten Obama's team, he canceled. I had heard the comment about him going to the Super Bowl if the Bears won. I gotta say something. What do I say? Obama will go. I got it. The president don't want to come watch us to the Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 We'll go see him. Finally, four quarters to go. The final four. There was conflict in Steeler country. Pittsburgh was in the Super Bowl, but a certain bar in Greenfield, Pennsylvania, had plenty of Packer fans. It was really um, an exciting time for, for everybody involved in Green Bay. And, and, and even more so for, you know, for my family in particular. We love you, Mikey! You know, everybody takes a lot of pride in the success of their son and siblings and everything, but we, we would have definitely preferred it to have been somebody else, you know, other than Pittsburgh. Eight years early, Charles Woodson had limped off the field as a Super Bowl loser. I remember thinking back to the first time I was in the Super Bowl, and having a broken leg, playing with that plate in my leg. I'm just thinking to myself, this is the best I've ever felt in my life going into this game. The weight of the organization uh, per se is on your shoulders. The ball's gonna be in your hands every single play. It was a great honor to know that Mike was gonna let me have the, the keys to the car, as he likes to say. Hey, Finally here. Third and one. Rogers play action. Looks to the end zone. Rainbow's Jordy Nelson. He's Aaron Rodgers to Jordy Nelson. Back to throw Rogers. One big short. Airs it out deep. Left side point for Wallace. The Packers led 14 to nothing, but not everything was going right for Mike McCarthy. During the Super Bowl, I didn't put the cap on the, on the Sharpie, so I guess um, when I put it in the back of my hat, it was leaking on my neck, and our trainer told me the story that a friend of his called him from New York and said, hey, they just had the coach on TV, and he's got red marker all over his neck, so next thing I know, he was wiping off the back of my neck, and I really didn't know I did this till to well after the game. That's how our season was, you know. Things things break, things happen. Fix it and move on. Second down and goal to go. Here's the snap, scans the secondary, pulls it over the middle. Leaping grabs, plays the goal line. It's a touchdown for Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings made it 21-3 on a post route from the slot. It was a play that the Packers would use often with devastating effect. The name of that play was 27 Tampa. Tampa two. We wanted to see how they're going to respond to us moving Greg around. Greg would naturally be the receiver in the slot. And we knew that that meant that the linebacker would be taking him uh, vertically. We get Greg down the middle for a touchdown on a play where Ferrier was kind of taking him a little bit vertically and, and hoping for some safety help and uh, hit him just in time for a touchdown. 
We want to see how they respond to it, and, and he made some incredible plays for us. You done? Yeah, I'm just fitting my ring for my finger. No one wanted a ring more than veteran Charles Woodson. He went all out to get it. Crap. I broke my collarbone, and I just thought, it can't, it can't end like this. One of my best friends on the team, and the guy I respect the most, is out. Just, I don't know what to say to him. So I just try to go over there and, and comfort him and say, hey, I'm going to get this one for you. That was as hard a position that I've been in, in my life. Harder still was delivering the halftime speech, knowing that he was out of the game. All of the emotion came out. I cried like I never cried before. You know, I tried to just tell the guys, you know how bad I want it. You know, go out there and get it done. In the second half, the Packers' leader was gone. So was their focus. I realize there's going to be physical errors. Now, maybe not that many drops. You have to catch the football to the Super Bowl. Um, obviously, the one of James could have been a touchdown. He could not bring it in. Jones would have been off to the races. But inside during that game, it was frustrating. The pressure got to Green Bay. So did the NFL's number one defense. The Steelers cut the lead to four as the fourth quarter began. Everybody looks up to Wood as being a leader. He's gone. Nobody's standing up and rallying the troops. It is time. It is time. To hear what Clay says, uh, to pick it. I, don't, I have a feeling I'm going to run this way right here. What are you going to do if we get area? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll be pointing at my dad. I'm going to point. Just, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to point at my dad. And to the guys in the huddle about he thinks it's coming his way. They're all looking at me. Huh? I got a feeling they're pulling this way. And pick it, spill it. Spill it, pick it. Like five. Spill it. In my opinion, he ranks as the most incredible player in the series. And off to a minute. Off to a minute. Off to a defense makes a play you want to celebrate and uh, you know I went to pump my arm pain shot down the left side of my body like you wouldn't believe and it put me back in check one more touchdown might checkmate the Steelers Greg Jennings had the perfect move 27 Tampa with a twist he was saying that nobody's covering him on the corner route. They completely drop in the corner route. Complete, when I say completely drop it, you put any anybody in that corner in the number three, run them corner, call, wide open. They can't cover it. They were probably looking for the post route because we had already hit the post twice with Greg lined up in there. <laughs> Rogers throws right side of the end zone. Palomaro <laughs> only about eight yards behind Jennings on that play. That's what champion does. He makes a play, we gotta have it. The six-time champions knew how to make plays, too. Soon, it was Green Bay 28, Pittsburgh 25. Hey, we knew it wouldn't be easy. We knew that. Hey, it's going on. Yeah, Let's go make it. Solidifies legacies in this game, baby. He had been scorned, humiliated, and overshadowed. Now, all eyes were on Aaron Rodgers. That play in general is is, uh, is a reflection of of my career and and how I've you know put in the time and and the preparation for that one play. Hey, it's a big third down right here. We got to get this. Let's go. Six minutes left. Third and ten. Twenty-seven Tampa. Rodgers had to be perfect. Rogers the middle. Oh, my, word. my best throw of the Super Bowl. What a conversion. Maybe the biggest of the season. Ike Taylor's coverage on the play, not bad. But Aaron Rodgers, pinpoint accuracy, doing it again. He 
incredible, incredible execution. Rodgers used up valuable time on the drive, but settled for a field goal. The Packers led by six. Less than two minutes remain. Make a play now. Let's go, boy. Make a play now. We legends. Let's go. Let's play. Be a hero. Be a hero. Come on, D. Come on, D. One more time, D. Come on, baby. It's fourth down, and this Super Bowl comes down to one play. Off the hands of Wallace there. Uh, it was mission accomplished, I think would be the best best way to describe it. Yes, Mike! We did it, baby! We did it! We knew when we got into the playoff run that we, we had as good a chance as any, and, and the confidence just kept building, and, and we finished it in North Dallas. What's special about the 2010 team is they never lost sight of the goal. They, they always believed. It's the reason why you love the game. It's, it's for that moment. It's to win the Super Bowl. It's everything. To win the Super Bowl MVP was not a goal. It was not something I thought about really until I got on the podium and someone said, hey, you're going to be the MVP. I was expected to play well. You know, I did. It was a sweet journey. It's special to know that on that one day, in 2011, that we were the best in the world. trophy is back in Green Bay. So is something else. A brand new picture of the 2010 World Champions. We accomplished our goal. We set out March 16, 2010. Mike brought the team together and this is our goal. We put a picture on the wall so every day we could look at what we wanted to accomplish and bring another championship back to title town. We're the champions of the world. world.